Greetings, friends. Welcome to CTUCC Conference Cast for May 8, 2014, the regular podcast of the Connecticut Conference of the United Church of Christ. Whoever you are and wherever you may be on life's journey at this very moment, you are welcome here. My apologies for a longer gap in our podcasting schedule than I'd announced or expected. I hope to return from our conference delegation visit to our ecumenical partners in South Korea last week and be able to produce conference cast pretty quickly. It turned out, however, that jet lag took a greater toll on me than I'd anticipated. The human body just isn't constructed to make the change in 13 time zones in just 14 hours. Or at any rate, mine isn't. So my apologies to you, and it's good to be back with you again today. We begin this week's conference cast with this meditation from the Reverend Davida McAllister, Associate Conference Minister for Youth and Young Adult Ministries. Today's text is the 116th Psalm, a cry to God from a person who has been in desperate circumstances. The snares of death encompassed me, the pangs of Sheol laid hold on me, I suffered distress and anguish. But I called on the name of the Lord, O Lord, I pray, save my life. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Today's reflection is read this week by your podcast host. I suppose it can be difficult to relate to this text if you have never had a time in your life when the only one you could call on was God. If you are in financial trouble and your parents are alive and have the means to help, you can call on them. If you have been falsely accused of a crime and you have an attorney on retainer, you can call on them. If you become gravely ill and you have adequate health insurance and a primary care physician, you can certainly call upon your physician. Even if you wake up in the morning with a terrible toothache, if you have a dentist you see regularly, you can call on them. But what about the moments when there is no one you can call? The moment when you have been silenced because you are a woman and you are surrounded by patriarchy? The moment when you are a student in an underperforming school and your administrators have abandoned all hope of writing the ship. The moment when you are an elder and at your most vulnerable and those who are responsible for your care choose to ignore your cries for help. The moment when you are a person with differing abilities and you struggle to tell your story while others refuse to hear you. Or the moment when you tell an uncomfortable truth as a child and no one is willing to believe you. If you have ever had a moment when you have been rendered powerless, voiceless, and unbelievable, this text is for you. In those moments when we cry out to God and God inclines God's ear to hear us, the joy is immeasurable. I remember many moments like this in my life, when I was denied ordination, when my heart was broken and there was no safe place to describe how she hurt me, and when I graduated from seminary and had to utilize food stamps to eat. In each of those moments and so many more, I cried out to God because the hurt, even the shame and the fear seemed too big to share with others. In those moments, God heard my cry and surrounded me with grace and love. Here is a prayer for this week. God, in the moments when our fears are too big to share and our hurt appears too big to heal, hear our cry. In the moments when all others are silent, speak into our hearts and minds. May the joy of being heard by you flood our hearts and cause us to celebrate your love and grace. Amen. 
Please hold in prayer today the family and friends of the Reverend Dwight Dutton, pastor of the Groton Congregational Church, UCC. Reverend Dutton entered the ministry after a successful career in engineering and was a well-loved and deeply spiritual pastor. He died on April 21st at the age of 76. And please join us as we remember the nearly 300 girls held in captivity by the Boko Haram militants in Nigeria. UCC members and friends around the country have joined in prayer for their safe return to their homes and families. In the news this week, from Korea on April 28th, Connecticut Conference Minister the Reverend Kent J. Salati announced his support for the United Church of Christ's legal action against the state of North Carolina, contesting the constitutionality of the state's laws on marriage, which make it a crime punishable by a jail term of up to 120 days and a substantial fine for a clergy person to conduct a religious marriage ceremony in the absence of a license. No matter what one believes about urgent or elder religious marriage or same gender religious marriage, Salati said, the fundamental breach of free exercise of religion is what is at stake. Once government is allowed to dictate what we or any other faith tradition may or may not do in the practice of our faith, then the challenges that lie ahead of this breach are significant. This is where we take our stand. We do so not only because it affects our clergy in North Carolina, but because we will always defend the free exercise of religion, anyone's religion. On that same day, Reverend Salati addressed the annual meeting of the Kyunggi Presbytery, our ecumenical partners in South Korea, in the 20th year of that ocean-spanning relationship. He noted the common commitments that have united the two churches for two decades, the urgency of working with those outside the church, particularly the marginalized and voiceless, the passion for social justice, the commitment to peace. He called for a partnership that would visibly demonstrate the values of interdependence. In order to build a community then, he said, there has to be a sense of trust, a common mission, a sense that we need one another, and the belief that God wants for us to be in mission and ministry together. The 12 member delegation visited with their partner churches on Sunday with the six clergy among the group preaching in five different congregations. They learned about Korean history at a living history museum as well as at the demilitarized zone where they left a prayer ribbon for peace on the Korean peninsula. We'll have more stories from the Korean delegation in the next two weeks of Conference Cast. This news item is also a program note. Minister of Communications and Technology Eric Anderson, your podcast host, will be on sabbatical this summer from June 1st until August 31st. My goal is to feed my mind and spirit and bring back new tools to use in communication and new resources for spiritual reflection. During my absence, the communications ministry of the conference must slow down. Conference cast will take a sabbatical, closing on May 29th and returning on September 4th. I can't say it'll be bigger and better when I return, but I plan that your host, at least, will be refreshed. A workshop entitled Jesus on the Road Competing Gospels is May 9th and 10th in Northboro, Massachusetts. A new Silver Lake offering this year is Clergy Camp for pastors to spend three days renewing themselves in God's backyard. Registration is now open. Clergy Camp runs May 13th through 15th. Learn about nurturing a healthy endowment for a local church at one of two workshops on May 15th in Suffield or on May 21st in Bristol. On May 17th in Clinton, we're offering Creating a Season of Generosity, Moving Stewardship from Blah to Transformational. Join us the evening of May 17th at the 4th Annual Youth Revival to be held at Dixwell Avenue UCC in New Haven. That Pushes My Buttons, a workshop on handling difficult behavior in ministry, is May 28th in East Hampton, Massachusetts. The Connecticut Conference Choir, which includes you or anyone else who'd like to come and sing, 
will enjoy a musical retreat at Silver Lake May 30th and 31st. You can learn about environmental hazards and how to keep our churches and homes safe on May 31st in Deep River. An online book discussion, Children's Ministry in the Way of Jesus, begins on June 2nd. And golfers, go get your clubs ready for the 8th Annual Silver Lake Golf Tournament on June 3rd in Waterbury. You can always learn more about what's coming up in the Connecticut Conference by visiting us at ctucc.org events. We conclude today with this Spirited Wednesday thought from the Reverend Lee Ireland, interim pastor of the First Congregational Church UCC in Westbrook on the shoreline of Long Island Sound. Walking there, Reverend Island has been seeing the treasures exposed when the water recedes at low tide. There's food for the gulls and there's seashells to delight the eye. Maybe we are invited to recognize the gift of the low tide season, she writes and offer thanks for all of our treasures which we can now clearly see, prepared to welcome those who come seeking and are hungry for the spiritual gifts we can offer. And that brings this conference cast to a close. Thanks to Dame McAllister for her reflection and to GarageBand for our music. Primary funding for Conference Cast comes from your congregation's gifts to our church's wider mission, basic support, changing lives through the United Church of Christ. This is Eric Anderson, the Minister of Communications and Technology for the Connecticut Conference of the United Church of Christ, praying that your days this week may be filled with the presence, the guidance, and the grace of God.